Welcome back to Don's Life. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. I've been asked to review this guy here. It's an Android box for your vehicle. It is called the CarPlay Android Auto AI box. It's available at onecarstereo.com and it's going to add a whole suite of features well above what your phone with CarPlay or Android Auto would be able to do uh, with your vehicle. So I'm really excited. We'll look at some of the features and we'll take it for a test drive. Let's go. Okay, let's take a closer look at the unit itself. First, we'll do the part that everybody loves. Okay, so this is it here. It's quite small. You see it fits the palm of my hand. There's some LED indicators on the front to let you know what's going on. But on the back, you have a spot for a nano SIM card. You have the USB-C connection to USB-C or USB. And then you have a spot for a micro SD card and I popped one in there just for demonstration purposes. All right, before we get started in the demonstration, your vehicle has to be compatible with a wired connection for CarPlay or Android Auto. If it doesn't have that compatibility, unfortunately this product's not gonna work for you. So this is what you do. Right now I've got the box plugged in with a USB-C cable to the USB hookup in my GMC Sierra. As you can see on the screen here, it thinks there's a CarPlay device. Right now, my phone is not connected. My phone is actually recording uh, this video for you. So when I push CarPlay, it brings me to the Android box home screen. Now it's important to note, if you see the icon size and the screen resolution here, this is actually a high resolution screen. This box can do up to 4K resolution. I'm not sure what my screen is exactly, there's a full list of compatible vehicles on their website and that list continues to grow. Keep in mind that every vehicle may have a different screen resolution. I've tested this out on my wife's 2016 Cadillac Escalade and on that vehicle being five years old, its screen resolution is lower than this. So right now my icons, if you have a look over here, they're, they're quite small. Uh, on her vehicle, and I'll superimpose an image here, the icons take up uh, much more of the screen real estate, and it actually means more pages to scroll through. But if you look at this home screen, look at all the apps and customizing that we have available to us. We have, you know, Google Chrome as an example that's connected to the internet right now. The safety disclaimer here is don't watch YouTube videos and Netflix or play games when you're driving. The vehicle shouldn't be in motion while you're doing that. However, if you had a passenger that's interacting with those things while well, you've got your eyes on the road, they could technically do it. But just remember distracted driving laws and things like that. This isn't, you know, a way to circumvent that. So safety first. When you plug it in, it takes about 20 to 30 seconds for the first time for it to load up. If you leave it plugged in all the time and it continues to get power, then it'll be available within seconds once you turn on your vehicle. So I let this stay plugged in night after night after night. And when I came back in the vehicle every time, it booted up much quicker because it was still getting power from this port. However, if you take it out of the vehicle, maybe put it in another vehicle, it's gonna take a longer amount of time to boot up. Part of the reason is it has to calibrate to whatever screen resolution you're hooking up to. So when I plug this one into here, it had to recognize for the first time what the screen resolution was, reset the box and then optimize the display to fit the screen resolution. And then when I took it into my wife's Cadillac Escalade and plugged it in, it tried to optimize it for that screen. So it had to restart and reloaded and then it optimized for a lower resolution screen because it's an older vehicle. So this does have dual band Wi-Fi. So there's five gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. I'm sitting in my garage right now. It's connected to my home Wi-Fi. Very good benefit. It does have Bluetooth so you can uh, connect to your phone and share its internet. Plus that uh, micro SD card, you can upgrade up to 128. So it has its own uh, about 50 megs left for storage after the operating system and everything's been installed, but it has 64 megs of built-in memory, but then you can, like I said, upgrade it to 128 if you so desire. One cool thing too, this has a GPS module built in, so you don't have to use your phone. If you don't have navigation in your vehicle from factory, you can use GPS tracking when you're offline um, with this device. 
What's really nice is this integrates with your factory controls. So depending on your vehicle, it's gonna be different. Mine doesn't have a tremendous amount of options here, but I can roll this knob as an example and it will go between apps, but it has limitations. I can't go to that bottom row. I can just keep going to the next page and then it starts over. So I, I can't get to that bottom row. Some of you might have like an up, down, left and right, and that functionality will be retained. Of course, your volume, your next buttons, all of that will work depending on the app. It's just you're limited to what your vehicle has available. One thing I do have that works really well is this back button. It will take me out of the apps when I push it and bring me back to the home screen. My home screen here takes me right out to my vehicle's home screen, but I can jump back into CarPlay just like that. All right, let's look at some of the features. I'll demonstrate some of them for you now that I've had a few days to start using this device. So just some basics, we'll go to settings here and you can see that you have most of the Android settings if you used Android before that are available, they're all here. We're connected to our network obviously to my Wi-Fi. We have our Bluetooth devices we could connect. I'll get into some of that in a little bit here. We have, you know, everything that you're accustomed to. I've got about 50 gigs free. I actually did some downloading uh, for this demonstration. And uh, yeah, so that's that. Now I can hit back right on the front here and it jumps me back. This little button is just shortcuts. So if I went back to settings, if I did want to push that back button, I can bring up this dot and I can hit back. Try and get it again here. There, and you see it just keeps taking me back. It's easier to push the button on my dash. Uh, you can see we have a lot of apps that are preloaded. You can go to the Google Play Store, download any apps you want. Maybe you want to download Cody, maybe you want to download a game. I'll leave that up to you on what you want to do. Okay, so let's check out YouTube as an example. Here's a, a Dawn's Life video right there. How about oh, that? Hi, Dawn's Life, welcome to the channel. Thanks Our for vol volume knob works good right here. Everything you're used to seeing on YouTube there, full screen. You know, take it off a of full screen. I can hit back to go back to here. I can close the video. I can go back all the way. I'm out. Piece of cake. I know a lot of you are probably wondering about Netflix. I already have a download here. So we're going to do that. Got an episode of TV. Let you have a look at what that looks like. So there you go, we have Netflix in the vehicle. That's pretty cool. Now let's say we wanted to navigate at the same time while our passenger is, is watching this screen. Bring up our shortcut menu here. Go to this icon, that'll split the screen. And then we can pick what we want to do over here. Um, so I'm going to clear that. And let's say we want navigation. So I'm gonna go to Google Maps. And then Google Maps will pop up here. We can have Google Maps on this side. We can have our TV show on this side. And you can adjust this slider so you can see the screen bigger or not. So that's pretty cool. And then to turn that off, we can just turn the split screen off like that and it'll go back to the home application. So earlier I said you have to have a wired CarPlay or Android Auto connection to make this compatible, but if now you wanna enjoy wireless CarPlay or wireless Android Auto, you can. So with this button here or this app, Auto Kit, this is my phone right now connected through CarPlay. So I can look at my text messages. I can, you know, listen to an audiobook. I could use Waze uh, just as an example. But this right here is my phone that it's looking at. So beyond that, you can also mirror your screen. So whether you use iPhone through various screen mirroring apps or more commonly with Android, if you want to use like MirrorLink or, or one of those apps to do that, this has the compatibility for it. But the fact that you now have wireless CarPlay or wireless Android Auto built into this, that's a bonus. And to get out of it, all you do is hit the car button there and it'll take you back to the Android box and away we go.
So I did mention that I'm connected to my home Wi-Fi, but remember this has a nano SIM card slot. So if you have a data plan and you want to plug it directly into there, you can have data on the go wherever you are, as long as you have a cellular signal. You can also just pair it with your phone and use your phone's data plan. So a tremendous amount of flexibility. And technically you don't need to have a phone with you to use pretty much any of this if you set it up that way. So one of the advantages of this that I recognized right away is if you have an OBD2 scanner like this guy here, I can plug that in and then download the app on my vehicle. And then I can interface with the scanner without the use of my phone. And that way, if I want to look at anything in real time, I can see it and I don't have to worry about having my phone out and, you know, messing with that. And again, we have more apps on here. We have the VLC media player, which will allow us to, you know, load media onto our micro SD card and play those files right from here. We have, uh, you know, YouTube, which I talked about YouTube music. You can install, you know, other apps, of course. There's voice control. The, the list goes on. You have Spotify. You can use it as your, you know, hands-free device for your phone. Obviously, I don't think you need to with your factory stuff. Uh, your messaging system, whatever you want to use. If it's on the Android uh, or the Google Play Store, you can load it on here and you can utilize it. So pretty cool stuff. Anyway, I think I'm going to continue to use this device. I can totally see myself taking it from one vehicle into the other. Again, as long as it's compatible with wired uh, CarPlay or Android Auto, um, but pretty neat device. So this concludes my review of the CarPlay Android Auto AI box for OneCarStereo.com. If you like today's video, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing, but I'm going to sit here and watch a little bit of The Office on Netflix. Talk to you next time. And things like the backup camera still work.